guys what's up welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be my july tbr i had a pretty hard time picking some books that i wanted to read this month but i want to I want to try to have a TBR, that way I can get through my physical TBR, which I think I'll be recording a physical TBR today, so that should be coming up soon after you watch this video. This video is just going to be my July TBR, and I'm going to talk about the books now. The first book I'm going to talk about is actually the book I'm currently reading, and that is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. I'm reading this on my iPad so I don't have the physical book, but I will read the synopsis. Absolutely not falling for the good girl. Bearded bad boy Barbara Knox prefers to live his life the way he takes his coffee, alone, unless you count his basset hound, Waylon. Max doesn't tolerate drama even when it comes in the form of a strand of runaway bride. Naomi wasn't just running away from her wedding. She was riding to the rescue of her estranged twin to knock him out Virginia, a rough around the edges town where disputes are settled the old-fashioned way, with fists and beer, usually in that order. Too bad for Naomi, her evil twin hasn't changed at all. After helping herself to Naomi's car and cash, Tina leaves her with something unexpected. The niece Naomi didn't know she had. Now she's stuck in a town with no car, no job, no plan, and no home with an 11-year-old going on 30 to take care of. There's a reason Knox doesn't do complications or high-maintenance women, especially not the romantic ones. But since Naomi's life imploded right in front of him, the least he can do is help her out of her jam. And just as soon as she stops getting into new trouble, he can leave her alone and get back to his peaceful, solitary life. At least that's the plan until the trouble turns to real danger. Well, I am currently reading this, so I'm not going to try to spoil anything, but the last line when trouble turns into real danger, I can feel like something's about to happen in my book. Um, so I'm really excited to keep on reading that. But that'll be the first book on my July TBR. What I'm going to talk about is my Colleen Hoover book of the month. I always read a Colleen Hoover book, um, at least I have for the past six months. So we're going to make it seven months and that is going to be Without Merit. I've had this one for a very long time, but honestly, it just doesn't look that appealing. Like I don't really like the cover, but I'm going to read it and I'll read the back. The Voss family is anything but normal. They live, live in a repurposed church, newly baptized Dollar Bosch. The once cancer-stricken mother lives in the basement. The father is married to the mother's former nurse. The little half-brother isn't allowed to do or eat anything fun. And the eldest siblings are irritatingly perfect. Then there's Merit. Merit Voss collects trophies she hasn't earned and secrets her family forces her to keep. While browsing the local antique shop for her next trophy, she finds Sagan. His wit and unapologetic idealism idealism disarm and spark renewed life into her until she discovers that he's completely unavailable. Merit retreats deeper into herself watching her family from the sidelines when she learns a secret that no trophy in the world can fix. Fed up with the lies, Merit decides to shatter the happy family illusion, illusion that she's never been a part of before leaving them behind for good. When her escape plan fails, Merit is forced to deal with the staggering consequences of telling the truth and losing the one boy she loves. Being poignant and powerful without Merit explores the layers of lies that tie family together and the power of love and truth. So that's what this book is about. I haven't really heard much about this book, so I have no like expectations at all. I just know that this is actually the last Colleen Hoover book I have on my shelf. So after I read this, I'm gonna have to buy some more. That way I can read the back of the rest of her backlist. But yeah, this is my Colleen Hoover book of the month. Then we'll get into my nonfiction book. And this is a memoir as <laughs> At least, as far as I'm concerned, this is nonfiction. If it isn't, I'm totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is a memoir. And that's a heartbreaking work of a staggering genius. And I was gifted this from my boyfriend's parents, so I'm super grateful for that. But I got this for Easter, and it's it, there's like no explanation at all. But when you open it, there's like a list, and it's like, one, there is no overwhelming need to read the preface. Really, it exists mostly for the author and those who, after finishing the rest of the book, have for some reason found themselves stuck with nothing else to read. If you have already read the preface and wish you had not, we apologize. We should have told you sooner. So there's just like stuff like that. And like in the in the um, note place, it says this is a work of fiction only in that in many cases, the author cannot remember the exact words said by certain people and exact descriptions of certain things. So had to fill in gaps as best as he could. Otherwise, all characters and incidents and dialogue are real. So I just think that sounds so interesting and fun and hopefully I'll really enjoy this one. Next four books, I'm just going to say this is a very flexible TBR because I feel like I might end up reading the rest of the Addicted slash Calloway Sisters series. So these four books I kind of put here like I should read those because it's my physical TBR but if I don't I'm not going to be too mad about it. But the first one I have is called The No Show. I recently got this from Barnes & Noble. 
Barnes and Noble. What? I recently got this from Barnes and Noble. It's a Beth O'Leary um, novel. She's an English author. I actually read The Flat Share in March or May. I think it was. I think it was April, May. I don't know. I read one of her books and I liked her writing, so I found this and I thought it was cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this. It says Siobhan is a quick tempered life coach with way too much on her plate. Miranda is a tree surgeon used to being treated as just one of the guys on the job. Jane is a soft-spoken volunteer for the local charity shop with zero sense of self-worth. These three women are strangers who have only one thing in common. They've all been stood up on the same day, the very worst day to be stood up, Valentine's Day. And un unbeknownst to them, they've all been stood up by the same man. Ooh. Once they've each forgiven him for standing them up, they are all in a serious danger of falling in love with a man who may have not just one or two, but three women on the go. Is there more to him that meets the eye? Where was he on Valentine's Day? And will they each untangle the truth before they all get their hearts broken? So it just sounds like a very cute like little romance novel and I'm excited to see why is he dating three women? Like there has to be more there, right? Next, I have said this many times in past videos, but for me, summer just screams Greek mythology. And so last summer I read the Song of Achilles. And so this summer I'm wanting to read Circe or Circe. I really don't know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna look it up. In Greek mythology, how do you go about pronouncing her name? Circe, Sir, C. Pronounce Circe or Kirke. Anyway, so this is what the back says. In the house of Helios, god of the sun and mightiest of the titans, a daughter is born. But Circe is a strange child, not powerful like her father, nor viciously alluring like her mother. Turning to the world of mortals for companionship, she discovers that she does possess power, the power of witchcraft, which can tr transform rivals into monsters and menace the gods themselves. Threatened, Zeus banishes Circe to a des deserted island where she hones her occult craft and crosses paths with many of the most famous figures in all of mythology, including the Minotaur Daedal Daedalus and his doomed son Icarus, the murderous Medea, and of course wily Odysseus. But there is danger too, for a woman who stands alone and Circe unwittingly draws the wrath of both men and gods, ultimately finding herself pitted against one of the most terrifying and vengeful of the Olympians. To protect what she holds dear, Circe must summon her strength and choose once and for all whether she belongs with the god she is born from or the mortal she has come to love. Wow, it sounds so good. really like Madeline Miller's writing, at least from what I read from the Song of Achilles, because it's true to the story, but it's also very easy to read and beautiful writing, and you fall in love with the character. So I'm super excited to read this. I think she's going to be a fantastic main character, so I'm excited. And then I have two like very short little books. The first one is called Women by Chloe Caldwell. I picked this up when I was in the UK and essentially this is what it says. A young woman moves from the countryside to the city and falls in love with another woman for the first time in her life. Ben is 19 years older than her, wears men's clothes, has a cocky smirk of a smile, and a long-term girlfriend. So this is a sapphic romance. It's going to be super cute and I'm excited to read it. Then the last book I have is LA Woman by Eve Babbitts. I really love her writing. Um, I've said this many times. I read Sex and Rage. I really want to read Black Swans. But I have this one, which I also picked up when I was in the UK. It says, Sophie, a 20-something Jim Morrison groupie gliding through a golden existence in Los Angeles, and Lola, a German immigrant who has settled in Hollywood. Know that while the city is constantly changing, it is essentially eternal. The two women dazzle one with the promises of youth, the other with the fulfillment of nostalgia. As they, as they win through their through the pink sunsets in the palm streams of Los Angeles. Living out their addictively decadent lives, Sophie and Lola are cult writer ba Babbitt's literary embodiment of the iconic LA woman, inspired by her own and hedonistic youth. So, super excited about this. These are all of my July TBR books. Hopefully I can accomplish that. I will let you guys know at the end of July. But yeah, let me know what you guys are reading this month or what you plan on reading, and I will talk to you guys next time. Peace and love. Bye guys.